What's up guys, yesterday I made a video detailing the Giants plan. Figuring out what their plan was and the purpose makes perfect sense and the feedback you gave me was amazing. We talked about Faye, Tyr, and Atreus, but in this video we are going to be discussing Kratos' purpose and all of it. Thank you to my YouTube channel members. The Spartan army is 18,000 members strong. Join the Spartan army and let's make it to 20,000. Follow me on Instagram and I will follow you back guaranteed. You can also follow me on Twitter and Discord. Let's get right into it. Cory Barlaw goes on record saying that everything in this game happens for a reason. Whether it be Mimir stuck in a tree, where we will eventually find him, the World Serpent being in the Lake of Nine, Brock and Sindri looking for redemption for creating such a terrible weapon being Thor's hammer, and of course the fated meeting with Faye. Faye's power was immense and she had power over so much. Here is a few clips of Cory talking about Faye. Then I'll get into Kratos' true purpose. Oh, in video games, uh, uh, say like uh, in all video games really, we have a technique of communicating with the audience by changing the color or the material on certain objects to indicate this is where you need to go, i.e. Bad examples would be perfect dark with the arrows on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, good examples would be like yellow piping or like white paint or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's called visual language in the developer parlance, uh, right? So the visual language in this game was placed by Faye. The entire journey has visual language the throughout hand. the yeah. entire game. The palm print. So that yeah. our sort of design way to communicate with the audience was rationalized at the end in that Faye was so powerful that she walked the path that you walked well before. There's actually things written, several things written throughout the, the journey that are in yellow. She also wrote those things. Question, if yeah. Mimir had not been on the top of that mountain, would they have just not known to, that he, she meant Jotunheim? The, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Faye would have been like, guys, right. what the hell? Oh, yeah. You have so much Why you need to learn! Midgard. <laughs> Maybe she's to thank for Mimir being there also. <laughs> Probably not. Um, well, but she knew he it, would it, be. It, yeah, in, in theory, the, she knew that he would be yes, there. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of connections between all of that. I'm not gonna, that's that's later stuff. I, so let's yeah. just say this, that it's not an accident. None of it is. Now that you understand how important Faye is, you understand that everything has a purpose. Kratos for his role in the Giants' plan was chosen by Faye. Kratos destroying Greece, coming to this pantheon in a state where he didn't want to fight anymore. Faye staying in Midgard, meeting Kratos when she didn't want to fight anymore either. Both of them falling in love and giving birth to the guardian of the giants was no accident. Let's travel back to Kratos' roots and look into why fate deemed him to be at the right place at the right time. Let's go back to Greece. Kratos was the youngest Spartan general, only having a few soldiers to amassing thousands of them. Together they started a conquest in which he called the glory of Sparta. However, despite his army, he eventually lost. Before his final moments, he called out to Ares and made a deal that will set his path in motion. Now what I'm about to say, I did a previous video on, but before we get into Kratos' purpose, you must know it. Like Norse, Greece has many murals depicting the future. Getting into God of War 1, as he was trying to go after Ares, there was a small part that is easily missable that depicts Kratos in the future. Check it out. This painting might actually be referencing Kratos in the future. Check it out. It is an image of a man battling Zeus himself. It is an image of the future. Look at that. That is amazing storytelling right there. You know, playing this game in 2005, you're obviously not gonna know what this is talking about. The next piece of information you know is in Ghost of Sparta. Ares and Athena was looking for a marked warrior. The Greeks' own Ragnarok will come at the hands of one in Sparta who is marked. Great war with the Titans. The Oracle had foretold the demise of the Olympian gods 
and the destruction of Olympus. She saw that it would be brought about not by the hands of the Titans, who thirsted for revenge, but by the hands of a mortal, a marked warrior. Whoever controlled the marked war controlled the fate of Olympus. Kratos trying to save his brother, being hit in the face and eventually getting the tattoos in honor of his brother made Kratos the marked warrior. The final depiction of Kratos being a Ragnarok type figure was also in Ghost of Sparta at the very end with the Gravekeeper also known as Zeus. First off, before I get into that, thanks to Tao on Instagram for messaging me about this. Uh, he actually mentioned the Gravekeeper in a message he sent to me, and that made me think about him, and I was like, hey, I can add that to this video, because I completely forgot. So definitely message me on my social medias, because they kind of inspire videos and moments in videos like this. Anyways, after beating his second god, once his brother passed, Kratos' eyes, wide and confused, asked himself, what has he become? And Zeus replied, By the gods, what have I become? Death, the destroyer of worlds. Here is what Corey Barlog has to say about Kratos being this type of person, why he keeps causing all of this. The, the, the sort of Asia pantheon believed Ragnarok was supposed to come down. In fact, nobody, nobody in, in any of the, the, the Norse gods' uh, realms believed that Ragnarok should happen now, right? Time was kind of messed up for all of them. So Kratos' interaction, this is like the, the big concept of this game that... Every other game, like every other God of War game, Kratos goes out to do something bad and inadvertently does something good, right? He uh, releases hope to mankind. He, mm -hmm. he uh, removes predestination, right? The, the, the Sisters of Fate, mm -hmm. right? He kind of uh, uh, destroys a, a very controlling polytheistic set of gods uh, and frees mankind from this control, right? Uh, but he's always out doing something super selfish and just mm -hmm. totally dickish, yes. right? Yeah. And it's like, now, he's going out to do something good. And of course, no good deed, right? <laughs> like, he's going out to do something and he inadvertently begins, you know, the, the, the sort of countdown to the end of the world, right? Yes. So it's yes. like, when you come back, it's snowing all the time. Love this is Kratos' true purpose. This is who he is. If Faye was supposed to care, raise, and guide the Guardian, and Tyr was supposed to give the Guardian a path, Kratos was meant to do what he always does. Be the destroyer of another world. Start Ragnarok. Also, be a Spartan general and teach your army of one. 10,000 Spartans under Kratos' command is nothing compared to the one Atreus. After all, Atreus was named after a Spartan. Atreus is a Spartan. Atreus is a warrior. Atreus is his son. His purpose is to train, teach, and destroy. This is Kratos' true purpose. This is his purpose in the Giant's plan. Alright guys, that's going to be the end of my Kratos theory and the end of the Giant series. I hope you guys enjoyed these three Giant episodes. Um, I th really think I unwrapped their plan. Let me know what you guys think. Join my Instagram, you know, talk to me on social media. It's really fun. I'm going to be out of here. Thank you guys for listening. Deuces.